What is that music in the background? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, just listen to that. Uh-huh. Oh, it's so happy. Hey. <laughs> it's called the Sugar Zone. Come on, everybody. Let's get some sugar. No. Uh, I have no idea what kind of music that is. I should probably know since it's uh, pretty wild back in the old days. Make you think the Austin Powers. Anyway, what is this weird looking thing in front of me here? Oh my goodness, look at you. <laughs> You're just weird looking. You're creepy. And you know what? <laughs> look at that. Is that a nose? Oh no. I'm sorry. That's just too funny. Okay, it looks like I guess it's an eel. Yeah, you're our feature creepy fish of the day. Are, are eels, eels even fish? I don't know. Are they considered serpents? <laughs> anyway, welcome to Chapter 4 Review Test. This is the first video of three videos. So we call this Review Number Uno. That's right, number one. Let's go ahead and get started here since Mr. War has been like, Phew, doing everything but math. Come on. So, it says Omar is making a scale model of the Statue of Liberty. Cool, for report on New York City. Yay. It says the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet tall, measuring from the ground to the tip of the torch. Wow, that's pretty tall. If the model is one hundredth the actual size of the Statue of Liberty, how tall is the model? Aha, so I see. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you could solve this problem. One thing is, if you took your 305 feet, if you're finding this is telling you right here that's 100th of the, of the size. It's of the actual size, I should say. 100th the actual size. Therefore, we're taking like 100th of the 305. You could multiply that by... 1 over 100. Well, this is just simply 305 over 100. You multiply that through. And then 305 divided by 100 should let you know that all you're doing is you're dividing by 100. And when we divide a power of 10, the decimal moves. That's right. To the left. All right. And when we're multiplying by a power of 10, the decimal place does the opposite. It moves to the right. So since 305, there's an invisible decimal right there because this number could be written as a decimal, which means we're going to move this two powers of 10. There you go, right there. One, two. So what do we end up with? Three and five hundredths feet. Or we say 3.05 feet. That sounds good to me. So as you can see, one hundredth of the actual size is pretty small, huh? Three feet tall? we probably get a little souvenir right there in the old uh, gift shop right there. Let's kind of keep going here. For numbers 2A through 2D, it says choose yes or no to indicate whether the product is correct. Okay, oh, I love these. Because let's face it, we have a 50-50 chance of getting these right. Okay, and I really do want to try to get these right. Okay. We have 6200s times 10. Oh, these are fun. These are fun because, you know, we really don't have to do any work over here. See, I just mentioned uh, just earlier there that any time you multiply a number by a power of 10, that you're actually moving the decimal place uh, to, the, to the right. Okay, if you're multiplying by a power of 10. Of course, if you're dividing by a power of 10, that's different. So here, we're just doing one decimal place is going to go right here. Okay, that just means 6.2. And that number did get 10 times greater. Look at that. The number before, it wasn't even a whole. It was tiny. Look at it, a little bit more than half. And now, well, now we're talking it's 6 and 2 tenths. And this saying is 62? I don't think so. No, Mr. Wara does not approve of that one. Sorry. I colored my little thing here. So sorry. Now we have 5,300 times 10. It's the same thing. Going to move it over. And sure enough, they say 5.3. Mr. Wara puts his stamp of approval on that one. Si, senor. I'll take that one. Now we have nine hundredths. Ooh, interesting. Nine hundredths, and it's being multiplied by 100. It gets rid of the decimal and brings it to nine. Woohoo! Yes! Two in a row. Makes you kind of think that the next one's going to be no, huh? Now we have 60 hundredths times 1,000. Ooh, you should be able to tell right away. Look at that. That's not going to happen. No, because he went loop-de-loop-de-loop -loop -loop all the way over there, the decimal would be right there. That would be 600. 
So sorry, 60, you don't make the grade. Therefore, my answer is no. And that's my final answer. Okay, unless, of course, one of you out there in cyberspace YouTube land challenge me. That would be, you'd have, you could challenge me. I'll take that on. All right, Nicole is making 1,000 bows for people who donate to the library book sale. That's very nice. I've heard to do that. Nicole, you're famous. Okay, she needs a piece of ribbon that is 0.75 meter long for each bow. How many meters of ribbon does Nicole need to make the bows? Explain how to find the answer. We have two jobs here. See, on the test, if I were to do this one, yeah, my students would be facing a two-point question because you have how many meters of ribbon does Nicole need to make the bows, and then you have to be able to explain. Why? Because that's common core, right? Common core It's all about showing the higher-level thinking. All right, well, looking at it, I need to think to myself, you know, do the RDW method I use a lot. Read, draw if I can, write, making a statement. But here, what I really think about is making sure I understand the problem. If she's making 1,000 bows and she wants to donate those, and she's telling you that she needs a piece of ribbon that is this length for each bow, when you phrase that question like that, each bow, I'm, I'm just thinking of multiplication, right? I'm thinking I need this times the 1,000. Now, here's the beauty. It's a power of 10. Yeah, I don't have to do any work over here. I could, but I don't need to. Instead, I'm just going to put my 0 0.75 meter right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply that number by 3 powers of 10. So I'm just going to go 1, loop -de -loop, number 2, then 3. And I'm going to put that decimal right there. Well, if you notice, the 7 has his like little loop-de-loop, -loop, if you will. His five's got a loop de loop. Can't think of another word. And that means that this one here, we're going to have to put a zero. All right? But we stop there. So we end up with 750. What's our unit of measure? It is meters. Is that for real? 750 meters? Wow. That seems like a lot. I don't know. 750? Well, 1,000 bows. I guess that's right, because when you think about it, what am I doing? I'm kind of just checking my reasonableness of answer. It just seemed like it was a really large number. But when you think about it, by just looking at 7,500 meter, that's almost one meter. Now, see, that seems logical now that that would be the correct answer. Well, let's go ahead and let me write my answer down. Fatima is shading this model to show 800 times 3. Shade the correct amount of boxes that will show the product. Okay, Fatima should shade blank groups of blank small squares or blank small squares. Okay, all right. A bunch of little empty boxes that we have to fill. All right, well, Fatima should shade, this is blank groups. I think of three being three groups of eight tenths or three copies of eight tenths. So here I would put three because you have three groups of, and then again, eight small squares, which is the eight hundredths. Or how many small squares we're going to have all together? Multiplication I tell you that should be twenty-four. But it does say that we have to shade the correct amount of boxes. So let me see what I have hiding behind here. So here would show this would be an example this would be point zero eight. Like eight hundredths of that one hole. Here would be my next group of eight hundredths. Okay? And then finally another set of 800s. You can see by this picture I'm actually indicating the three different groups by choosing a different color lets us know you're doing another group. Wasn't that easy? Yeah, I want to be push. I want to push that. That was easy button. You know, that was way too easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the page. Oh, you again, huh? Oh my goodness, you just don't give up, do you? You are one creepy looking guy. I'm sorry, I don't, I just, you know what? I think we gotta do something with that. That face is just, look at that face. My goodness. Maybe we could make like a circle. Oh, he's just, he's creeping me out. All right, time to get a shape. See what I'm doing here? I'm gonna really, yeah, it's just his, it's his face. He's just like, he's kind of creepy looking. And that nose is too funny. Oh, there, isn't that better? Yes. Good. Okay, there. Now I can deal with it. <laughs> hey, Tenley is making a square frame for her painting. 
she is using four pieces of wood that are each two and three quarter feet long. How much wood will Tenley use to make the frame? So again, we have four pieces of wood and each of those pieces has that length. And that should give you an indication that we could take 2.75 and multiply that by four. So let's go ahead and multiply that. Now we don't have this simple power of 10, so we're gonna to have to kind of show our work. I'm gonna go ahead and again, I'm not gonna worry about the decimal right now. I'm gonna multiply these as if they were whole numbers. I know that in a previous lesson, they actually write them, had us write them as whole, uh, as whole numbers. I'm gonna leave that there and I'm just gonna ignore the decimal for the time being. Okay, I have 20, I carry the two, I have 28 plus two makes 30. I carry the three and I have eight and that makes 11. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna multiply that one factor by 100 to remove that decimal. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna divide by 100. And now I get 11 feet is what I have. Nice, easy number. Is that reasonable? Well, if we had done that estimation four times, and this is almost three, would have equal 12. Yeah, I'd say that that was pretty reasonable. It's right there. Oops, I roll right into my next problem. Watch this magic. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right, now you're out of the way. Nice. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wara. Really now, which problems will have two decimal places in the product mark all that apply? Well, in this case here, we have five times 89 hundredths. I was just saying which one's going to have two decimal places in the product. Well, I see two decimal places here, don't you? I do. It's a hundredth. We'd have to multiply by 100 here to make that a whole number. So when we go to the product, we're going to have to do the opposite. So you see two decimal places? Yeah, this is really, really basic, I think, don't you think? B, okay, I only see one decimal place here. Only one. That doesn't work. Sorry. Okay, you'd, it'd be a whole number at the end, but it wouldn't have two decimal places. Here, look at that, I see one, two. I see two decimal places, okay? Even though this is 10 raised to the zero power, okay? So that I'm going to say yes on that one. 6.1 times 3, no. I see one decimal place. Here, I have one decimal place, tenths, and another tenths. We know that tenths times tenths is going to give us hundreds. That's going to be two decimal places, so I say yes to letter E. And look at that. It's like two eyes and a nose and then a mouth. Hey, woohoo, a face. Oh, sure, Mr. War, yeah. Ken and Leah are trying to solve a science homework question. They need to find out how much a rock that weighs four pounds on Earth would weigh on Venus. Oh, cool. They know they can multiply the number of pounds the rock weighs on Earth by 91 hundredths to find its weight on Venus. Select the partial products Ken and Leah would need to add to find the product of four and 91 hundredths. Mark all that apply. Interesting. You know, what I'm thinking is that an area model might be the way to go. Why don't we do an area model? I say yes. So I'm gonna take four and I'm gonna multiply this. Sometimes I just like to have this in whole numbers, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this as the decimals. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put 0 0.9. That is the value. Here, I'm going to put point, oh, I'm sorry, zero. Let's get that zero in front, point zero one. Now, when we look at this here, we can look at our simple facts. Four times nine is 36. However, we have one decimal point, remember, in the factor, so we need to move that in the product, so that was going to be 3.6. Here we have four times one hundredth. Okay, again, four times one, just four. However, I have two decimal places here in the factor, so I'm gonna go ahead and reverse that, right? Divide by that 100. Multiply 100 to get that out, divide by. In this case, I'm gonna do once, twice, so I'm gonna put the decimal way over here, okay? And there's another little loop-de-loop -loop in there, so that's gonna be point. 0, 04, which again, 0 in the front. So these would be my partial products. Now, if we're to add these, 3.6, then 0 0.04, I should be able to get, this is just 4, this is 6, and this is 3. 3.64, which my partial products would be 3.6, because I see that there, that was right here, and I do see my 0 0.04, and that's right here. So just these two. 
So if he exchanged 1,000 US dollars for the South, the South African currency, which is called the Rand, the exchange rate was 7.15 Rand to $1. How many South African Rand did Sophia get? Explain how you know. If 1,000 US dollars here is equal to, because it says here, exchange, oh, I'm sorry, does that say this? It says Sophia exchanged 1,000 US dollars. Okay, so we she knows that this number here, $1, is equal to that. To get to 1,000, to get from $1 to $1,000, wouldn't we have to multiply by 1,000? Yeah, so to figure that rate out, that's what we're going to do. So instead, we're going to take that 7.15 and we're just going to multiply by 1,000. Again, I don't have to set this problem up because we have a power of 10. We have three of them. So if I'm going to move the decimal, I'm going to count 1, 2, 3. You can see the decimal is going to be way over here and I have a loop-de-loop -loop right here that didn't have a digit. So I'm going to put a 0 in its place. Now I have 7, looks like 7,000. 150. Does that seem reasonable? Well, sure, at just one dollar, it was already seven. So it's just going to be 1,000 times. I'm going to definitely say it's going to be 7,150 Rand. Now the question becomes, how did you know? Well, I was kind of talking through the problem. Basically here, you know, for every dollar that Sylvia exchanged, okay, because she has to exchange 1,000. So for every dollar that Sophia exchanged here, she's going to get this amount. I just simply multiplied 1,000 with the 7.15 to get my 7,150 Rand. So let me go ahead and write that down. Okay, there we go. Part B. Looks like the last one here. Now it says Sophia spent 6,274 Rand on her trip. She exchanged the Rand she had left for US dollars. The exchange rate was 1 Rand to, is that 14 cents? How many U.S. dollars did Sophia get? Support your answer using specific information from the problem. We need to say that she used this amount of money. And we know that she had exchanged her 1,000 U.S. dollars, which gave her 7,150 Rand. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to subtract, right? Because she had this much uh, that she spent. Let's find out what the difference is. So I'm getting 876 Rand. So that's kind of the first step. That's how much Rand. So she's going to exchange that. The exchange rate at this time was 1 Rand was equal to 14 cents. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take that Rand then and multiply it by the 14. I'm going to leave the 14 cents as a whole number for simplicity. So I'm just going to take 876. I'm going to multiply that by 14. And we will, since we have two decimal places, we'll, we'll go ahead and take care of that later. So here we have 24, carry the 2, which this is 28 plus 2 is 30, carry the 3, 32 and 3, that's 35, placeholder, that's right. And then I have 6, 7, 8. Now, of course, I'm going to be adding, so I end up with 4, 6, 12, carry the 1, 11, and then that's 12. Now, it might be nice to say, ooh, she has $12,264, but we know that's not true because, remember, we didn't, we, we haven't taken care of the 14 cents yet. So since it's two decimal places, we're going to go two decimal places in. So we're getting $122.64. Now, support your answer. Uh, I kind of talked through this problem, so... Like clockwork, the video has now come to a very, very sad end. Please, don't get too emotional. Grab for the clinics if you need to. But know this, another video is on its way. Okay, now, live long and prosper, my friends.